Good afternoon, everyone. Phil Simons here with Columbia Grain and your weekly grain market recap. Well, another week is in the books that was jam-packed with volatility once again, as the drivers was mostly on the headlines, primarily focused on the wheat pits once again this week. We started out the week with headlines coming from Russia that their wheat crop has the potential to produce a massive 99 million metric tons which would be up roughly 32% from last year's 75 million metric ton crop. To add to that, they are also estimating that Russia might have 47 million metric tons of wheat available for export in the 22-23 crop year. This is, a, this is compared to the USDA's current expected number for Russian exports at 42 million metric tons. So really the bottom line is a potentially more wheat on the world market which you would really think would have to see the markets really pressured lower based on this fundamental information, which is really what happened on Monday uh, when Chicago was reading this news and actually closed down by 29 cents on the day. But then on Tuesday, the real fireworks started when the report started hitting the wires over an escalation in the Ukraine-Russian war, announcing that they will hold a vote to annex some of the regions in Ukraine that Russia currently occupies. And really once this information hit the wires, uh, the market spiked up in Chicago, uh, Kansas and Minneapolis up by close to 60 cents on the day. So really net net the report was telling us that there's potentially more wheat in the world at the beginning of the week, but then the headlines really over the war continued to trump uh, any fundamental supply and demand picture for wheat that we saw earlier in the week. So with that, in the level of uncertainty, uncertainty that we continue to see hitting us on a daily basis, really don't let the greedy bird get you and get your orders out there working because as of right now, no order is a bad order. But I do want to share my screen with you just so that we can take a look at what the overall weekly range was and the net change uh, in the futures price action anyhow, just looking primarily at the December contracts. But starting on the left side of your screen here, we can see that Chicago uh, Dece corn, the, the weekly range was 30 cents. And we changed that we, we settled today with a net weekly change of up just a penny. And then when we look uh, next, no beans, the weekly range was 68 cents. Uh, and we actually closed uh, no beans with a net loss of 21 cents on the week. Uh, middle of the chart here, we can see that Kansas Dece had a weekly range of 93 cents once again, uh, but only was able to hold on to 16 cents of that overall range. Uh, next, uh, Chicago Dece, we can see that they had another massive, massive trading weekly range of a dollar and three cents. But uh, when the dust settled here today, we we're actually only able to hold on to 23 cents uh, of that overall range. And then lastly, we can see that Minneapolis, Minneapolis D's had an overall range of 77 cents uh, and the weekly change was up by 15 cents week on week. So again, you can see that the volatility is definitely uh, still alive and well, as we can see here. And primarily, again, focusing in on the wheat pits, uh, soybeans were, you know, absolutely, uh, you know, part of that volatility session here on the week as well. Uh, next, I did want to look at the export sales as well. Uh, from the USDA that we that we saw yesterday, uh, just again showing that they did come well below what we really needed to see uh, in terms of our actual pace. So again, starting on the left hand side of your screen, you can see that corn uh, in terms of million bushels for US export sales came in at 7.2 million bushels for the week. Uh, this is really close to only about 20% uh, of what we really needed to get um, in order to be on pace with the, the current USDA estimates. Uh, soybeans came in at 16.4 million bushels. Uh, this was closer to the pace that we needed to be at and closer to about 72% of where we should be uh, in terms of uh, actual sales in order to hit that the estimates by the USDA. Wheat, on the other hand, came in at 6.7 million bushels, and this is about 50% of what we need on a weekly basis in order to meet the USDA current um, estimates for overall wheat. Uh, the, the big one here was white wheat again at, on, on the very right hand side of your screen there at 2.4 million bushels. There was some flopping around uh, coming out of unknown destinations and registering into China uh, and also in, into Indonesia as well. But we did see additional sales to China 
uh, of white wheat, which is good news because we do need to find additional homes uh, for as much wheat as we can for right now, especially when we look on the overall world wheat co competitiveness. Uh, when we continue to see Russia and the Black Sea really undercut U.S. values by close to $90 a ton. Uh, so again, you know, the, the whipsaw actions that we've been seeing here last week and really this entire year uh, look to continue as the uncertainty continues to magnify as well uh, when we're looking at the overall uh, picture of the Black Sea and the war that's definitely impacting the, uh, the overall market prices. So again, with this types of whipsaw action that we see, uh, just don't let the greedy bird get you. You know, get your orders out there and get them placed. And remember, when the plate of cookie goes around the table, be sure to grab a couple. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll talk with you next week.